afternoon. Uh, is it morning? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sangamir, for affording me this opportunity to speak about the ICANN Center and what we are doing in Cape Town. But I have to do some introductions first in order for you to understand. Uh, this is the heading, Digital Impact in Local Communities. A lot has been said and my presentation will more focus on what I have done so far and how we've changed the lives um, in a region called Alsace River and beyond uh, in Cape Town regarding digital technology. We can move to the second slide. Um, we have to go back a few slides. Firstly, well, just to address who we are. I'm going to get to the word ICANN Center and what it means, but our entity is called Genesis Community IT Initiative. Um, you know the rest. If we say we are a non-profit organization, this is always our intro. We were founded in 2014 and we have empowered more than 3,000 individuals. And the focus of this non-profit organization is to narrow the digital divide at existing communities, also empower people with digital skills and very core cool to give them access to free internet. And that is the focus of the non-profit organization. We regard ourselves as a vehicle for social trends and digital transformation. Now this is our entity. And our entity has partnered with Western Cape Government, whereby the ICANN Center came about and we were managing a lot of pro projects. We can go to the next slide. Firstly, what was discovered that Wi-Fi spots was put up in some areas within Western Cape government and they realized that um, giving people access is not enough. You're giving someone access to internet, what are they doing with the internet? And out of that, the concept of connected communities grew, where communities ought to be connected. An example of a co connected community is the ICAC Center. It's the initiative of the Western Cape government, it's a public access facility, whereby we, have, uh, we provide access to broadband, empowering uh, citizens with digital skills. In a nutshell, what am I saying? Um, what the ICANN Center offers is for people coming to the space and get access to technology. What we do, we provide people 45 minutes internet access per day, um, 300 megabytes free Wi-Fi per month, they can attend free courses on a Friday, the rest of our days are, are other training, attend free workshops, inform them of learnerships, internships and projects. And this is what we are providing to the community for free. And we know the word for free, there's always uh, an inverted commas because although it's free, someone else is paying for it. And that is where we've partnered with Western Cape Government, whereby our focus is the stats on the number of people that walk in, walks into the center, what we do with them, and we sign them up to um, benefit from those aspects. Our second slide, talking about the ICANN Center. The uniqueness is the model that has been created, or I would rather use the word facilities, because the various facilities that was created was focused on a specific task. Now with the slide that you see here, I think we can press another button for other images to appear. We have something called a commercial zone, and this is the area where people walk in. If they walk in, uh, we service you with printing, laminating, faxing, and we also encourage you to um, obtain an ICANN membership, whereby you can benefit from a lot of programs, as I've mentioned. Then we have an area called LearnZone, which is a fully-fledged computer lab. This is where people come and learn computers. One area is what we call our free courses, which we offer to communities who have never touched a computer, when all those fears of, of, of seeing a mouse. You know, um, for me, being in training in many years, there's some people that's even afraid of a mouse or holding a mouse, especially if you start training them. And we've realized this, that there are people that um, are challenged in that area. And because of our free courses, we have narrowed that gap. Um, we have an area that looks very bright. It's just one picture with a yellow background. And inside that area, we have um, not only computers, we have Macs. Because we have learned, if you want to be creative, if you want to focus on arts, you need to have that type of technology in your facility. Otherwise, you close the doors of opportunity for people. So we have up to 10 Macs in an environment, and it is on those Macs where students are creative. 
And um, you can imagine, some of us even never worked on a Mac before. But to give a child that kind of exposure really changes their lives. And it's amazing how quick um, students learn. And then we have a play zone. And fortunately, on the day, on Madiba Day, we had the CEO of Sangunet there, and he enjoyed himself with the kids while they were playing games. And it is in that environment where we stimulate ICT. Not everyone is going to come to the center just for training. And that's the reason why we have various facilities. And um, out of that facility, we started a gaming club. A gaming club where kids come every Friday with the Xbox. They plug it in because they're taking ownership of the space. We have the TV at, at their disposal. They plug in the Xbox and they play games. Out of that, we formed clubs. And this is how we need to think as NGOs. Um, we have now two teams in two different areas whereby they are competing with one another. And I'm working very hard to let more communities step into this opportunity and they can start forming clubs. Which events that South Africa is focusing on where um, gaming will become an e-sport. And it's amazing for, to understand that gaming addresses a lot of social ills. It keeps kids off the street. It creates an opportunity whereby they learn more about digital skills and eventually we're going to have kids going into IT just because of gaming exposure. I will be speaking later on that because out of that I create gaming competitions. They all come together, they all compete and we make some trophies, someone donates trophies, we hand it out, we put it in the newspaper and they become gaming champions. Building that self-esteem and that self-confidence in communities. And you don't need a lot of expertise on that because the kids itself, they will actually know how to manage that. Um, and then we have education where we have young children that comes in after school, especially between the area of um, 3 o'clock and five, up to 5 o'clock, and they make use of the ICANN Center, especially for research and education. We have seen that they even struggle with assignments, and that's the reason out of that we started helping them how to research. Uh, the following slide. So that's actually the model of the ICANN. Locked up in this facility, I've divided into what I call a CEDA model. Simulating social innovation through technology, advancing education through technology, stimulating entrepreneurship through technology, and that's important because entrepreneurs who start out, they need internet. They really don't have money because they're already starting out a business. And the ICANN Center has played that important role whereby entrepreneurs come to the facility and they can advance their business with technology. And we'll be speaking also on that. Expanding digital literacy programs. Um, in a nutshell, a lot has been mentioned, but we do offer various IT courses for people who want to further their career and also want to get a specific job and providing access to broadband. We can go to the next slide. Okay, just in detail um, with access to broadband. The most important thing that must happen in access to broadband, if there's one keyword I'm extracting is adoption. If you're not gonna get adoption right, you're gonna miss everything. And it is how people must adopt this technology and that becomes a handholding process. So people must adopt technology. Your first training phase that you want to train people is not to give them the hiring skills, is to give them a course whereby they can adopt technology and make it part of their daily use, such as checking your email every day, checking your WhatsApp, creating groups, creating face groups. Those skills are adoption skills towards technology. And out of that skills, you will then grow and say, I want to do now more basically in digital skills. So the adoption becomes important. Um, it's amazing how we see this guy. Um, his son bought him a laptop, this old man, and he's so excited because now he needs to Skype with his son somewhere in UK, and that is what is happening. And we spend a lot of time um, training these people up. We had to train that person in Skype, and there was a cost involved. For 70 rand, just for two hours, with a young person standing there, we set up his account, even on the phone on Skype, if he's not close to his laptop, and we installed Skype, downloaded it, he's now using Skype. Um, to, to, to speak to family members that is abroad. And that is where it actually becomes a need using the Skype technology. So we focus on a variety of unemployed, um, the elderly, programs with primary school, high school, and also with university students. We can move to the next slide. 
Here we expand our digital literacy programs, and these are our partners which we have. So coming from the creative space, we have Adobe, because we have seen that to offer web design has become core. Cool. That is an area that we need to move into. We have some technical skills like the course called IC3. We have trained more than 300 people in IC3. And that is the digital literacy certificate. In Europe, it is also defined as a benchmark for digital literacy. And I have adopted that certificate in my program. And through partnerships, everyone is accepting it because I've adopted, adopted it. Um, I'm part of the discussions how libraries can be changed now into a technology space and how people can be empowered. And my proposal to them is the IC3 Digital Literacy Certificate. I speak to various entities, City of Cape Town, Western Cape Government, and if they speak about digital literacy, that is the, uh, the core cause that I'm proposing to them. And I've developed a map whereby um, to train people and also empower them. Just remember, you taught yourself word. You taught yourself Excel, but you don't have any qualification. And that is a market that we also tap into because we call those people to receive a formal qualification. And they would write an international exam in Word and Excel. Now, the uniqueness of the ICANN Center or the uniqueness of what we offer, it is basically international certificates, meaning that we are giving children an opportunity that they've never um, received before. We can move to the next slide. Okay, advancing education. So, speaking about coding, here kids are busy with robotics, building this device and connecting it. Young children, and they, uh, these are high school children in a, in a program. So, during um, school holidays, we have a spring school and we have a winter school. We, we've partnered with Western Cape Government, also the WCED, the Education Department, and we will run specific programs geared towards ICT. And that is an opportunity that we're also looking at. We can go to the next slide. Very creative. Here we teach mobile app development. Mobile app development, um, robotics, they are building the scar. Afterwards, they're going to build an app to control the scar. The school is also still currently running. And not only is mobile connected to robotics, but these kids have built um, apps that started out in various businesses. So some digital courses will lead to employment and some other courses will lead to entrepreneurship. And that was my discovery. It is now what do we offer for a specific, specific child that they can either decide, I'm going to start my own business. So social innovation is actually driving entrepreneurship at the ICANN Center. Can okay, move to the next slide. Entrepreneurship, very important. Although our focus is digital skills, we've seen that businesses are struggling and I'm getting in cutting edge latest uh, industry-led entrepreneurs that will come and speak to the people either about BEE, um, how to brand yourself, and all these people are passionate about entrepreneurship. We bring them in and they train up these people. And the beauty of it, if they're done with their workshop, out of these groups, they will adopt people which I asked them, please adopt some of these entrepreneurs, put them on your mentorship programs, put them on your learnership programs, that something can come basically out of it. I also have CEDA attending my workshops, where they also take some of these students and actually put them on our programs. How does it work at the IK? You're a citizen, you walk in. Out of that citizen, I motivate you to become a member. Out of that membership, you will either then attend our free courses that will empower you. And now that you have obtained a few, a, a, a few free courses, you now feel, I actually want to do more. From that, if we have courses that are funded by any entity, we then put you on a funded course. It can be funded by Google, it can be funded by Microsoft, Western Cape Government, City of Cape Town, based on opportunities. And from the funded um, course, we then also put you on a paid course if you now find a job and you do want to do a specific course. So the paid courses is actually locked up in our sustainability model. Other opportunity is some of these courses will either gear you to, towards um, entrepreneurship also. So now let's look at stats. What have I done so far? You can go to the next slide. Okay. 
I've given you an update just till March 2017. So from March 2017, we have up to 18,000 um, visitor attendance to the ICANN Center for 18 months with a ratio of 1,000 uh, people coming to the center for various reasons. Our registered memberships, we have Wi-Fi registered users, and what we discovered also that there are some people during that time that did not have devices. So most of them were using the Nokia phone. Remember the Symbian software? And it actually disallowed them to enjoy our Wi-Fi. And uh, that is what happened. I've given you the amount of data that was consumed during that period to know just to make it successful or to train these amount of people. It actually costed some data to run this program. And I have a partnership with Sonic Wireless that is providing me a 20 meg line for free. That's our partnership. And they would want to see the impact. And um, that's, that is the amount of data, 2 terabytes, that was actually consumed during that period. 3016 was the total that we trained people. Um, so, with free training, it was 625 people. I had entrepreneurship week training, 446, which opens up that there are more people now focusing on entrepreneurship. And then I have funded courses that was 761. Funded was, most of these courses were funded by West Cape government, and I'll explain to you. Projects that I was running throughout this time, Women in ICT and Entrepreneurship, where we trained up women to build their own website, build their own business card, creating a flyer. And out of that project, I did that project with no funds. Out of the, that project, now City of Cape Town wants to empower more people based on what I actually offered. So sometimes there are times that we need to run, do the project again, get the experience, put the photos on Facebook, do your profile, do your report, and after that, um, people will actually come back. My other programs, if you can just go up one slide, I just want to earmark some of the stuff. Yes, just one. Um, we touched on job readiness skills. What is Webacathon? Webacathon was guys who we taught web design had to go out and empower um, NPOs with websites. And this is what we do with web Webacathons, and I'm looking at this here to run it again. So they can build a profile for them in order to get the job because there is basically a need. Gaming competitions, it's, um, that's the amount because people that actually attend our gaming competitions. We can move to the next slide. I think on this slide I actually will take time. The 761 what I've mentioned um, that I received funds for to train. Look at these various courses that I did. I did not only focus on one course because there's different needs. Some courses lead to entrepreneurship and some will lead to employment. Digital photography caused people to move into entrepreneurship. Uh, audio visual. Now some children will not sit behind the computer. They will not sit behind the computer, but they could in a technical way. And actually, as an entrepreneur, do jingles and actually uh, basically get money. From that, I want to touch on game development. They have trained people in how to build your own game. How to build your own game. It's online. We train them up. And the last part of the fourth industrial revolution, which must actually still be unfolded, is 3D printing. I offered that course because I bought two 3D printers, had the software, and five people were empowered in 3D printing. Something that I'm looking at in pursuing in the future. And this was the um, courses that, and some people are not, um, can you see the artist development? There were some kids in the community that wanted to sing. And I had to look at that, that specific need. And we called it artist development. We trained them up in social media, and we did some video recordings that they can actually feel part of the program. We go to the next slide. So that is actually what I've developed and packaged, and I have project learnings of each and every course that was basically offered. Here are some newspaper articles. This young boy is disabled. He did the course called Digital Photography. And out of that, um, he wanted to become an entrepreneur. And you can see his, his, his status, he's disabled. And the uniqueness of him uh, allowed him to get a bursary in entrepreneurship and he's running his own business. 
Based on his situation, he then employed two people to take the photos, whereby he's just managing the process and also editing the photos afterwards. We focus on both, which is the social impact and also the economic impact. So digital skills will address social issues, which I believe will address social issues that exist, and also it will help towards the economic impact. The challenges which I face, which everyone is facing, the are times that students really don't have money. They are in, in, in dire situations. Uh, gangsterism is very big. You've heard about Alcides River before. Some of you have heard it over the news. And there is indeed a crime issue. But beyond that crime issue, this is the type of results that we can achieve. And I do face challenges with people, especially in the community. Um, but I believe that uh, your passion can allow you to overcome certain things which the community faces because they're coming to you for help. Uh, there's some learning challenges which we identify. Some people cannot learn and that is what you're going to discover if you move into the area of skills development. These people have learning challenges. How do I need to address it? And you're going to pick it up. And that is where you need to build their self-confidence, their self-esteem, and they can be uh, believing themselves firstly and then afterwards obtain um, that specific skills. And go to the next slide. So I've learned for the Industrial Revolution that there are two areas very important. Whatever you design and develop must either lead towards employment or entrepreneurship. If it doesn't lead beyond those two, you are wasting your time. So anything that you write down, any plan, it must be towards digital employment initiatives. Remember, there's going to be future work. Um, there's going to be social media managers in future. There's going to be online marketing people. There's going to be new jobs created. And we need to think of where we are moving towards. And also the entrepreneurship. If someone has a desire for, for entrepreneurship, then you need to work out something. Just to add what I'm doing in entrepreneurship now. Obviously, we know about the guys in India. They're getting a lot of work overseas. Why must the Indians get work and we as South Africans can't get that same work? So I go online, I have a partner now that's going to go online, get the work, upskill a pool of people, let them start doing the work and start building our brand with South Africa and we can actually do online work also. There's a lot of work out there and they're looking for skills. It's just the skills factor that we don't get the opportunity. That is the reason why I partner with people. You cannot make it on your own. I have a partnership with um, Western Cape Government, and I also have a partnership with City of Cape Town. Also the partnership, as I've mentioned, with Sonic Wireless, and these are my strategic partners in making the project a success. Then I have some training partners. Um, you can just have a look at it. So, uh, these are my training partners. So if I want to run digital photography, and I don't have facilitators, I have partners that I go to that can offer this training. They do get the money or in the, uh, they do get the funds for training at an affordable rate. They do understand that we're an NPO and at the same time it also builds their business. Then I have certification bodies that I partner with in offering these courses. Sage Pastel, City Port, um, Compia, you, you've seen some of this. I just want to speak on Sage Pastel. Where is the world moving to? We spoke about it yesterday in our capacity planning. Sage Pastel has become free for MPOs, meaning that we're going to migrate with, but we have no staff. And I've seen that um, Sage Pastel is also now in the cloud, and they're offering affordable um, monthly fees for Sage Pastel, meaning that they're going to start looking for people who knows how Pastel is working. And that results in we have to trade Pastel. Speaking about affordability, a university charges up to 9,000 rand for five days training in the very same certificate that we charge 4,000 rand over a period of four months. And that is what, what, what the NPOs must do. They must actually start disrupting these commercial markets. Um, supportive partnerships, people that support me, such as the Department of Labor, sending me their whole database of unemployed people, and also UWC helping me in certain areas. We can move to the next slide. These are, this is my, my, my website, gcity.org. The project that we run with ICANN Center is um, ICANN.org 
and then we have our Facebook uh, page. Can move to the next slide? Oh, you're right. Okay, we're gonna have it now on. When you're gonna ask questions, I'm gonna keep it on. Huh? Give me a minute. And then I'll finish up. My question to you is how can GCT assist you in empowering your organization with digital skills and remote training opportunities? You can go to the next slide after that. Just give you an idea. Let's say you're going to need help in something. Or we can partner together to do some stuff. Just to train you or maybe your organization. You're going to need a first level resource required. You have your computer, you have your Skype. Um, I forgot to mention each of it. You need to have internet connectivity. And through Skype, we can see where we can empower you. I've trained up a lot of people in Northwest recently just by using Skype. And they have a computer lab. I log into uh, the Facebook, I even do via um, TeamViewer, and I actually train up the whole class. All they need is a tutor on site that can actually guide them that have gone through the program before. The second level resource, computer, Skype, projector, having good speakers in your class, and that is how I can communicate to you, either to your students, in doing training, without being, having an expensive facilitator on site, with having good internet. Your third level would be having video conference equipment with a panoramic view camera and advanced microphone that you place in a corner and it can actually get the whole room. So what am I saying to you? There are opportunities, if you acquire these resources through a funder, you don't need to have an advanced lecturer um, at your disposal. All you can do, you have a relationship with me, I make one of my facilitators available. They are on Skype, they speak to the whole class. And I'm training them up now already to think in that way um, regarding instructional design and also training. So um, thank you for the opportunity that I can speak about what we're doing at the ICANN and how we can also support you. Thanks. No, the, the slides were done, eh? it was not because I, it's not finished because I used to be a The slides were done. Yeah. The first question, the second one, the third one, only two, Mamnon Cha and Ngo, the third one, maybe Ma, I must invite the fourth one. I'm not um, still calling for the fourth hand. I want to find out um, you. Uh, the highest crime rate is in Nyanga and in Kailicho. Mm. Now, I just want to find out, um, you may not have had a program related to that. Do, have you ever thought of um, ensuring that those become also one of your focal points? Because I think it has got something to do with what we are trying to address, avoidance of idling of children in the West. So I'm asking this, I happen to have a, a victim of Inyanga crime, for example. One of my brother's name is a cabbage because of violence in Inyanga. So I think people like you, you can have innovation of changing the mindset of the people because it's in the mindset. I know that you've got the complex gangsters and the rest, but I'm asking about this two presently. Okay. The second hand was here. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Pona I wanted to know if you've got a satellite branch in Gauteng. The third one is uh, here. We are not going to attend the fourth one. The third one. Actually, my question is the same as the Let's just ask you do you have the satellite branch in Hunting? No. Okay, uh, my question is very simple. What motivated you on a daily basis? It seems like you have a lot of energy in you and the passion as well. Um, I would like to know the secret behind you. Uh, it's not everyone who has the passion that you have. 
Um, we are here, but we don't have what you have. Maybe there's a secret behind you. I'm also a social activist. Okay. I have a passion in my in, in my in my uh, the level of work, but it seems like when on your side you do have the special one. Uh, can you can you reveal the secret, maybe? Thank you. You must talk. Okay, um, regarding the crime Nyanga and Kayanita, the uniqueness where we are situated, um, the bus service is very unique. For those that have been in Cape Town, if I use the word Mowbray, it's really on the other side. People can travel direct to us and the bus drops in front of them. That makes them safe. The, the facility that they're managing is not somewhere deep rural or deep urban. It is on the main road, which allows um, people to be safe. To answer your question, I'm currently busy in Kailicha and I'm speaking to them of adopting my courses and actually expanding. They are currently in my programs now where I am training them up um, in certain skills that we can look at. And also my younger, I'm looking for entrepreneurs there. I'm not going to move into a community whereby it's already profiled by people and there are um, NPOs already running. But I know what is happening in Langa. Um, there are NPOs that are focusing on ICT, but my younger, I don't know much. I look at them, how they can actually do that. But um, from my side, social dev department is actually doing things close to younger. But if I find entrepreneurs that is willing to partner with me, I'm willing to share my programs with them and see where we can basically empower. No, thank you. Oh, that question. Yo, <laughs> you really want me to answer that? Um, I think... For, for moving into the space, I'm not going to now speak about my past professions, but um, being in the corporate world, it was just, I was not being satisfied. I was a teacher before the time, and then I moved into the corporate world because I got tired of teaching and all that stuff, and I felt that um, I'm tired of it. You know how you, you get to that point. But then, but still teaching, yes. Now what happened is the following. I believe what I do is God called. So, so, so I, I felt a misfit while I was sitting in an office. I got the money and everything. I enjoyed it, but I was really, really unhappy. Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> and that resulted We honestly, I was in this project and I still had other thoughts. Whereby the Lord really spoke to me and said, this is what you must do. And, and that has been my drive for it these days up and down. But uh, my passion is when I see people succeed, then I am okay. What's also my strength is, is my wife is with me within the business. Yeah. So I don't have to go home and tell her how my day was. She already knows. So when we go home, we just go sleep. <laughs> so she's with me every day. She's managing the project. Here. I'm making it uh, with a very good backup. I have a very good, passionate team. And... Um, I think that is also what, what, what drives me. And also the other, other part which I focus with people is the spiritual wellness. That's the other side of me. So uh, if I'm not giving you skills, then I make opportunity to speak to you on the spiritual wellness. And I think that is the core. We are human beings, but our core is actually our spirit. Yeah. And that results in, if your spirit is right, you will be able to do everything. And that is the area that I focus on. And then based on that, I believe in you. Even if you catch on nonsense, I'll be leaving you the next day also, until you get to that point whereby we can uh, rehabilitate you. And that is actually where my energy comes from. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, th thanks very much to the pastor. <laughs> can, can, can she... <clears throat> can you just say it, can you just say it quickly?
Yes. Um, it's unfortunate that Google is not here because they do have funds available. I'm always on their neck and that is one area that ought to be penetrated. I'll share with you that companies, one of the challenges I have with these companies, the focus is, I do it, but it must be, the focus is only education, entrepreneurship, uh, nutritional stuff, but no one focuses on digital skills. You see, and I think that is what Ford and Sibanda had to address and we can collectively now say to companies, your focus, and this is what I want as NPOs to focus on, um, your fo the focus must be digital skills for all these companies, not education and entrepreneurship only. And these CSIs that I have a problem with and I'm fighting with them, they are now pushing more the money into small businesses because of BE scoring and not into NPOs because they, f they feel their BE scoring will go up much more quicker if they invest in companies, but not if they invest in NPOs. And that is something that we need to drive as a people and let those companies realize that it is the NPOs that actually also needs the money. And that, that is my heartbeat that I actually want to take them on that they must now um, redirect their funds into digital skills. But in addition, I'll also be sharing you some of that information, yes. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, we invite you to have lunch and come back here at uh, 14 hours. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks, yes. <coughs>